I've known Brian and his work ever since I took over the gallery three years ago. Um, and it always, always, always appealed to me because as I always say, I really love abstract art. I always have done. I remember studying aestheticism, British aestheticism, um, when I was at university. Um, and I was fascinated with the idea that a painting didn't necessarily have to have a, a meaning or a message behind it. Um, you didn't necessarily need to think about the social history behind the piece. And all of that's really interesting and valid too. I love talking about symbolism and connecting a work of art with, with the history that surrounded it. But for me, there's pure joy in just looking at paintings. That's why I wanted to work with paintings when I grew up. That's why I loved going to Kelvin Grove Art Gallery when I was younger, because paintings just fascinated me. And it wasn't necessarily the subject matter that always appealed. Sometimes it could just be the surface of the paint or the frame that it was in. Um, I guess all of that sort of goes to explain why I like abstract art, because I just love the way an artist can be clever enough to combine the formal elements of any painting, colour, texture, pattern, shape, composition, and combine all those to create pieces that just balance and work perfectly. I've been sitting looking at this piece uh, all afternoon whilst I've been working in the gallery, and it just zings off the canvas. My eyes sit and rest looking at it happily for well, much longer than they should have done because I should have been getting on with lots of work. And I was trying to think, you know, if you were to remove a section of that, take away that strip of neon red orange colour or change the marks so that we didn't have these dragged down scratches in the canvas or even those drips, it just perhaps wouldn't work quite so effectively. I also grew up being told that red and pink weren't colours that should should be seen together, but he's applied reds, pinks, peaches, oranges, sort of really bold neon colours onto this piece in quite big sweeping gestures. I mean, you can see the brush marks really clearly here and strong verticals and horizontals in that line, this one here, cuts the canvas into thirds horizontally. And then I suppose, yeah, so the top third is one sort of long sort of strip of that blue. And then the bottom two thirds is this composition of verticals and horizontals, brush strokes and scratches and scrapes all combined to make this piece where your eye sits and looks. I don't know how he's managed to make these marks, whether he's put something into the paint and dragged it down the canvas. I don't know, like a piece of cardboard, the corrugated cardboard. And in here, I think he's scratched through the paint so the surface of turquoise has been scratched to reveal a sort of pink underneath it. And there's thicker areas of paint too. So it's sort of thicker here than it is perhaps over here. It's layers and layers and layers of colour. I just have no idea how you would be brave enough really to make such big sweeping gestures and brush marks to create this piece and to be able to stop and know when it's finished and which mark is it that finishes it off and balances it completely. The age old sort of misconception that anyone can make an abstract piece of art just isn't true at all, at all. You really have to have an eye and a knowledge of how to balance and compose a piece of art to, to make a piece as successful as this. The other piece that I've really loved looking at by Brian is Hibernian Gig. And as soon as I unpacked this piece, um, when it arrived in the gallery, I fell in love with it. And it's the way that circle just 
woof, pops, pops right out of that canvas. Again, massively bold to cover the majority of your, of your canvas with a sort of flat blue and then put this sort of circle of strong colour right in the middle. It almost looks like a window through into another painting actually, because look at the detail that's in there from the splodge of the green to the brush marks that you can see here. And again, this sort of scraped technique, you know, is it sort of a hill with sunset in the background? Is this the sun in a blue sky? And then again, these sort of quite strong horizontal lines and then verticals. And again, no fear of showing you that that is just a brush mark whoosh, straight down with white. And then the swirls of purple and the swirls and lines and marks of, of again, really strong neon colors. I mean, it's almost a landscape really with these purples here you can kind of almost imagine the sort of rhododendrons that we have on the secret coast now actually the purp and the purple heather later on in the sort of late summer autumn time and the sort of line of orange bracken um it sort of reminds me a little bit of the view that i sometimes get when i drive back down into colin drive on the way home after work Perhaps we never quite get such a strong blue sky with the sun that colour. I don't know, sometimes we do. But the colour is incredibly pleasing in this piece. And quite a tonic, actually, when you're maybe feeling a little bit low, not wildly happy with everything that's going on at the minute, to sit and look at something that's just so incredibly colourful and vibrant and happy. Yeah, really, really happy.